So there was this guy. He just killed him. He's going to fight her. She has a blue lightsaber. Okay. So that guy falls. He's dead. That could very well be this dude or this dude. I'm thinking it's probably this guy because the hair color or whatever looks a little different. This chick is definitely that one that he's choking out. Chokes her. Then her lightsaber's gone. Starts fighting Cinderella with one hand, the master right here. So he takes one of these dudes out, takes her out, and then it's just Cinderella and maybe him. And that's what we see in this hollow recording right here. Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be going over something that I think is the most, one of the most interesting things from the trailer, the Mandalorian season three trailer. And that is in regards to the Order 66 flashback scene we saw of Grogu right here. And so while it was very short, we do understand that this is an actual flashback scene. This is Grogu there at the temple during Order 66, and it's drawn a ton of attention from fans all across the board. Now, the reason for that is because Or of the Jedi looks somewhat familiar. Now, I'm going to debunk a few things here, but I'm also going to talk about some theories about how this could actually possibly come together and connect to Revenge of the Sith. Do you all remember the hologram scene that we saw of Anakin choking out the Jedi during Order 66. Yoda and Obi-Wan go back to the temple, and Yoda says, If into the security recordings you go, only pain will you find. And so, of course, Obi-Wan does anyways, because he says, I have to know, right? So he goes in there, and he sees a bunch of the recordings of Anakin absolutely just destroying Jedi from Order 66. And in particular is one that I always found pretty freaking cool. Now, we're going to break this scene down, and I'm going to tell you who he's fighting at this moment in particular, right here. This, who he is fighting, is played by Nick Gillard, who is actually the stunt coordinator and sword master of all of the prequel trilogy. I've had a few back and forths with Nick over email, and we've discussed some pretty cool things, and we'd like to do an interview together. This is, is Sindrelig, played by Nick Gillard, and he is the lightsaber master of the Jedi Temple. So he trained all of the Jedi in lightsaber combat at one point in time. So he was the dude that you go to for, let's say like Severus Snape is the potions master and you go to him for potions. He would be the guy you go to for lightsaber training class. And so he would train all of the younglings, Padawans, Jedi Knights, and he was revered as, you know, like one of the best duelists because he was just so proficient in all of the different lightsaber forms. So this is who Anakin is fighting here at this moment. But if you also pay attention, he's he's choking out one Jedi. Uh, it looks like a girl with one hand while he's fighting Sindrelig, the lightsaber sword master at the same exact time one handed. And so if you ever played the Revenge of the, Revenge of the Sith game, Anakin actually kills Sindrelig by stabbing him. And of course, that's not canon now with Disney's new stuff, but it's interesting to know that that's how Cinderella went out. Now, in this scene in The Mandalorian, where we see these four Jedi, this to me looks like a girl, and she has a blue lightsaber. This here is a green lightsaber. This looks like Cinderella. This is Cinderella with a green lightsaber. However, unfortunately, I don't think this could be Cinderella, considering that the lightsaber handle is not the same as Cinderella's. Cinderella's lightsaber handle is actually this one. So his lightsaber looks like this. And I mean, he could have had different versions. It's very possible. It could be a little thing that uh, maybe was skipped over or missed, or he was using a different lightsaber at the time. It, it's very possible. You, you never know. Maybe he picked up someone else's from the ground because his got uh, destroyed. Who knows what the story is there. But from our information here, the lightsaber is not the same. Now, he did have his other students with him, of course. And this lines up with this scene here. Of course, this guy looks a little bit older than this dude, <laughs> but this could very well be a Jedi Padawan or even a knight, and she could be right here next to Sin, and so could this dude and this guy, which would line up with Anakin killing Cinderella, taking out this girl, and then the whatever else he does by fighting the rest of them. That's really the only little glimpse that we ever got in Revenge of the Sith, where we got to see Anakin fighting Jedi at the Jedi Temple. I would love to see more of that and not just, you know, him stabbing youngling Reva in the chest and her surviving. I would like to see him go toe to toe with the get with the Jedi Temple's best Jedi, you know, including Sindrelic, who was like, a, I would, I would say a lesser form of Count Dooku when it came to lightsaber combat. Now he was very proficient in all different forms, 
but Count Dooku was, well, Count Dooku, and he was known through the whole galaxy as being like one of the most respected duelists. And you just, you don't mess with Count Dooku because he just, he will kick your butt. So also something we can consider here and look, take a look at is that Anakin's level of power at this point in time is so beyond anyone else at the Jedi Temple that was there because he's choking one Jedi out and attacking the lightsaber sword master of the entire Jedi Temple with one hand as well. Now, Nick Gillard went on to create a numbering system for power levels. Anakin, when he turned to the dark side, was a level nine. To get there, he had to turn to the dark side. And the way he explained it in the books and in interviews was something like, if you use this power of the dark side, you're using like a cheat code. And in order to get to this level nine that Anakin got to, he turned to the dark side, but he hadn't mastered this level eight yet. He hadn't mastered the forms before the levels before where he could properly ascend to level nine. He like just kind of jumped. So, you know, you skip a whole bunch of stuff in the meantime when you get there and you don't fully learn everything that needs to be learned. You don't like complete a level and get all of the achievements. You kind of just jump to the next level and you have some of the things with you. And this was Anakin, you know, basically turning to the dark side. He became very strong very quickly, but he hadn't mastered that ability yet and that form and that power and all of his abilities and, and powers. So at this point, Anakin being a level nine, which is like one of the most powerful levels that you can get to, really shows us just how dangerous he was when he got to the temple. Whether he mastered it or not, this was still Anakin Skywalker, and he was pretty much maxing out the power level meter. Now, this is some really behind the scenes kind of stuff. These are in the books, and these are in the making of books, as well as any interviews with Nick Gillard. I've made a few videos about this in the past, but this is essentially his numbering system that he had, and he had numbered Obi-Wan, Darth Vader, the Emperor, Yoda, and all that, So and Mace, and he developed devise this system to basically pit all of the different characters against each other and to know where each stands and Anakin was level nine once he ascended to the dark once he turned to the dark side he ascended to a level nine so this is why he's able to take on all of these different Jedi is because of course he's powerful and he's the chosen one but once he turned he literally leveled up instantly and jumped and used that cheat code so as we can see here he's just choking the chick out and then fighting Cinderella at the same time and then right underneath Nick Gillard who is the stunt and fight coordinator who basically devised and created all of the fight scenes for episodes one, two, and three, starts to talk about how George Lucas himself implemented a leveling system. Then we have the part from Nick Gillard, which talks about their training and of course the leveling system. So I wanted to provide that backstory part from George Lucas. And now this is what Nick says. The fighting has evolved considerably in these last three movies. George works on a system of skill levels. Yoda is a level nine. Darth Sidious is a level nine. Mace Windu is a level eight. On Phantom Menace, Obi-Wan was a level 6 or 7. On this film, he's moved up to level 8, which affects his style of fighting. Anakin in Attack of the Clones was a level 7. In this film, he has moved up to a level 9. He's gone past Obi-Wan, and the difference is because of the dark side. Even though Yoda is a level 9, it's controlled. So, if you think of it, the way I'm gathering this information is essentially Anakin jumped up pretty hard. So Anakin pretty much went on roids and made some insane gains, but the problem was that these gains aren't controlled, like what Nick is saying that George Lucas has created. So if you think of it, you know, let's say a sniper has the same amount of power as a shotgun, but one is controlled and directed versus the other is just rampant and just goes all over the place. I'd say Anakin is like the shoddy and Yoda is like the sniper. And then I think Palpatine is like a shoddy and a sniper put into one. So he's just absolutely insane and volatile. He goes on to say that you have to go through each level to attain the next level. So I guess kind of like Dragon Ball Z where you shouldn't really skip levels because that way you're not really training the in-between part so that you can stay in, let's say, Super Saiyan 3 for a longer period of time. So you need to ascend to that Super Saiyan 2 level in order to get the power and be able to comfortably stay at Super Saiyan 3 much, much longer than if you were just a Super Saiyan 1 and jumped into 3. He concludes that Anakin is too young to go through the trials, so he's got to this level too soon. So there was this guy, he just killed him. He's going to fight her, she has a blue lightsaber. Okay, so that guy falls, he's dead. That could very well be this dude or this dude. I'm thinking it's probably this guy because the hair color or whatever looks a little different. This chick is definitely that one that he's choking out. Chokes her, then her lightsaber's gone, starts fighting Cinderella with one hand, 
the master right here. So he takes one of these dudes out, takes her out, and then it's just Sindralic and maybe him. And that's what we see in this hollow recording right here. I think that's exactly what this scene is. And I think this is an actually Anakin busting through that door. And he, for whatever reason, either doesn't kill Grogu, saves Grogu, or gets stopped by somebody else who helps Grogu get away. It would be wild. Oh, this is not a real thing. This is not a th this is not even a theory. What if Darth Maul went back to the Jedi Temple to get Grogu? We saw him at the end of Seven. What if he went back to the Jedi Temple to get Grogu and make him his apprentice? And this is why Grogu's memory is so messed up, as Moff Gideon said, because Maul was trying to turn him as his apprentice. Could have been Maul's, like, go to mission, seek revenge on the Emperor and overtake everybody if he had a little Yoda of his own. What if Anakin had set Grogu free? I made a video on that. Grogu was saved by Anakin Skywalker at the Jedi Temple. It's possible that he couldn't bring himself to killing the last creature that was, you know, Yoda's species. And in this moment, he allowed Grogu to get away, maybe either by not striking him down fast enough, you know, letting Grogu escape, or full on just turning his back and letting him get away. Now, there's someone else that could have been at the temple, Jocasta knew, possibly, but I think Vader would have gone back for her. And he did, but later on in the suit, um, some time later. And I think he would have remembered that she was there and he probably would have been a little more ready. So it can't be her. It's gotta be somebody else in the Jedi Temple Maybe Shock T, even though she's died like 50 times in the behind the scenes and deleted scenes in Revenge of the Sith. You know, she died at the Jedi Temple in a deleted scene. She died at by Grievous's feet in a deleted scene on the Invisible Hand ship. And she, she could die in so many different ways. She died in like a dream sequence that Yoda had. So she could very well be the one that perhaps saves Grogu. Now, in the novel, she was the one who actually went to Anakin and said, do not leave the chamber stay here and he like didn't listen he went to palpatine's office and you know everything else was history so it is possible that they could have shock t here which would be nice you know but at the same time i think it needs to be someone a little more powerful to let grogu get away for that little bit of time that maybe you know shock t is stalling anakin or whoever is stalling anakin at this point in time I don't know if Anakin would have the 501st with him. Maybe he's just going through the temple and just raiding, and the 501st are doing their own thing. I would imagine Vader's style is to just go through and do whatever he wants and doesn't need the help of any sort of clone. Vader's very egotistical, right? So we have to remember that. So I think this might not be Cinderella. We could be totally off because of the lightsaber hilt, but then again, you never know. He might be using something else. It might, you know. Mace Windu's lightsaber hilt in episode one looked pretty much exactly like Darth Maul's. I'll show you. That's Mace Windu's lightsaber from episode one. This is his episode two and three one, but this is his episode one lightsaber. Literally looks like Darth Maul's lightsaber hilt. Like half of it. So, I mean, uh, it's very possible that Cinderella is maybe using a different kind of lightsaber at this point in time that we just don't know about or haven't been informed. It is Disney, they do change stuff around, so you don't really know what the continu continuity is gonna be like exactly with so many new people working on the projects. I imagine, you know, some things might slip through Dave's fingers or John's fingers, you know, at one point in time, or they just have a different lightsaber for this dude, and it could be Sindrelig indeed. So it's unfortunate that we don't see any, any more of the room around, we just see them fighting, but I do think wholeheartedly that this could actually be this sequence, this being this sequence from Order 66 that Obi-Wan sees, and Grogu is behind. Now, in the Book of Boba Fett, we saw some flashbacks of Grogu, and there were Jedi that were being taken out by five or first clones. Sure, this could be maybe that moment before they bust through the door, but I don't remember seeing a door in that scene. Also, he could have just gone to a different part of the temple, or someone could have taken him to a different part, and they were protecting Grogu. I think Grogu was extremely important to Yoda and to the temple. He was like the last of Yoda's species, perhaps. And it was very, very important that he was saved and continued on the lifeline and the species of Yoda's people. Not to mention he was there for 50 years. Well, no, at, at that point, it would have been like something like 20 years or something or 25 years. So no, what am I saying? Yeah, it would have been something like 25 he would have been like 25 years old or something like that 27 years old so for this scene i do think it is anakin skywalker that is busting through that door 
to come and fight these four Jedi who are protecting Grogu. And it links up with this scene here where Anakin takes out the Swordmaster Sindrelic, takes out the, the girl Jedi, and takes out the other two guy Jedi and absolutely destroys them. How Grogu gets away? I don't really know. Maybe he goes under Anakin's wing. Maybe Anakin takes him as his secret apprentice. And this is like a Force Unleashed kind of thing. Not really sure entirely, but I am very excited to find out what the truth behind all of this is. Yeah. And I hope you guys are too. So let me know what you think of my theory. Let me know what you think of all of this. Hope you have a great day. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed the theory and uh, the, the speculation. And I want to hear your opinions. Read your opinions down in the comments below. Catch y'all later. Have a great day and may the Force be with you always.